I'm Mike and this is Own the 24. My beautiful wife Lori and I took two 11,000 mile motorcycle rides this summer incorporating every must-see motorcycle road we could get our wheels on. This is the second video in a series of videos we're doing as a result of all of the beauty we saw this summer. We're capturing that, we're capturing what we thought were the highlights of it and we're sharing them with you. So lots more content to come. You know the interesting part about these this pursuit of the great motorcycle roads is for every must see motorcycle road or great motorcycle road, there was at least one other road around it that was just as good. This video is about one of those just as good roads. It's 14A from Dayton, Wyoming to Lovell, Wyoming. I've seen it called the Medicine Wheel Passage, Medicine Wheel Scenic Passage Byway, Bighorn Scenic Byway, whatever you call it, wait till you see it. Now, where should we pick the story up? It was all so amazing. This day was day 24 of 43 of our first trip this summer. In just the eight days prior to this day, we had seen Sedona, the south rim of the Grand Canyon, the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We had ridden the Grand Staircase Escalante, which we just, that was the first video we did in this series, twice up and back, Monument Valley, Moab, Million Dollar Highway, the Peak to Peak Highway, Highway 34 between Estes Park and Fort Collins, Colorado. One of those just as good roads, unbelievable. Custer State Park, Needles Highway, Iron Mountain Road, and we had seen Mount Rushmore. Just in those eight days, there's no way to convey and capture how beautiful those days were and how adventurous those days were. Mountain scenery, beautiful vistas, oh, and a 45 mile an hour crosswind coming north into Wyoming to end us up at, uh, at the coolest little farmhouse Airbnb in the middle of a field in Lingle, Wyoming. Like, can't, couldn't have made that up any better. Now for this day, it was just going to be the road from, you know, 14A from Dayton to Lovell, Wyoming. That road alone deserves its own video. But as I was looking at the day, the day started out with Spearfish Canyon. How do you do a motorcycle video without including some of Spearfish Canyon? So I included some of that and I included a little bit of our uh, adventures on the way. A little embarrassing down and backs and, uh, and dirt road encounters and Sheridan trying to get us off on our way to the west. So I sped through that. Hopefully it works and, uh, and let's check it out. Okay, here is the map of our entire day, starting in Lead, Spearfish Canyon. Great, great, great ride here. All the way across Hewlett Cool, Devil's Tower. Big, open, big sky country, all the way to Sheridan, where we discovered that this section here, recommended by Google Maps and Apple Maps, is dirt. And dirt don't work for the Big Fat Harley, so we had to figure that out a couple of times. Not just once, went down, found one option, dirt, second option, dirt. And then we ended up going around uh, around the top through Ranchester, which was all fine. The real key road here is Dayton to Lovell. Look at this road. Oh man, on the on the map, just bananas. How that looks in the switchbacks, and it was every bit as good. Really, it was just a happy accident. When you look at, we were just trying to get to Cowley because Cowley is on the way to Yellowstone. Cowley was close enough to Yellowstone for us to stay there. Found a great Airbnb and not pay the premium prices of staying inside the park, uh, the Yellowstone Park. So we ended up just trying to get to Yellowstone and ended up on one of the most incredible roads we've ever seen. So let's check it out.
One of the things we said we would do better at on this trip is stopping at the scenic turnouts. We, we don't really don't do a good job with that, and that's my fault. Usually I just rush by, like, wow, that would have been cool to see that. So this time we actually decided to turn around, and I have no explanation for the U-turn here, so don't think less of me. That's about a 65-foot U-turn when in our practice sessions we can do it about 18 or so. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. So that was uh, a new world record for longest U-turn, widest U-turn. But here we're going to pull into Bridal Veil Falls. Really, really cool place. We actually stopped at a waterfall to take pictures. Spearfish tractor run. We go uh, all the way through the canyon <laughs> down there. <laughs> that was hilarious. If you to, if you to put a gun to my head and said, <laughs> what what would be the weirdest thing you'd see in the Spearfish <laughs> Canyon? <laughs> I don't think I would have guessed an, an antique tractor parade <sighs> on Thursday morning. On a Thursday morning, just yeah. In front of the waterfall. Maybe they go out, out to breakfast and they all ride their tractors and then they ride home. <laughs> it's like the Indian River riders yeah. on their bikes going it's to breakfast. Funny. They just ride around the city, the country. Yeah, well, hey, I this love is it. life. I this love is life on the road. The randomness of it. Yeah. And I'm glad you were able to capture that. Yeah, it's so funny. Look at that beautiful waterfall. You always have to kiss your photo on. He doesn't need the duck face. Oh, the duck face. <laughs> <laughs> you Clear your nostrils like you're really horny. <laughs> Is that what you do? Is that the look? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the look, honey. You know what Steve Martin says? What? He said, do you know that look your wife gives you when she's really, really horny and wants to have sex? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Oh, well. We laugh.
Wyoming. Hewlett, Wyoming is cool. It's such a cool little like western town. Those storefronts are all wooden kitchen posts and wooden wooden walkways. Really, really cool. I thought it was pretty awesome. Nice and warm. A little little tiny bit chilly this morning and now it's by 70 and we're just soaking up the sun. Having a great day. When you get to the straight flat stretches of road like this, man, you're glad you have really good audio, good, good ear speakers, music, audio, whatever you want to listen to, cruise control, highway pegs. I mean, this is the time to really kick back, kind of stretch your legs, relax, and, uh, and at some point you have the opportunity to maybe do a little, do a little silliness, but. Uh, we try to have some fun when it's straight and flat and the coast is clear, just just uh, change things up a little bit. You know, Lori gets to be treated to some of my on-road on shenanigans and humor. I, can, I don't even have to hear her. I can see her eyes rolling and her groaning. Had a nice stop, fuel and snacks in Gillette, Wyoming. Again, uh, pretty pretty straight and flat there. Tons and tons and tons of train cars, man. There must have been 200 uh, locomotives lined up, connected up together. On the right in these cars, you can see uh, electric car fuel. Looks like that, that black stuff they dig out of the ground. Big area for that. Gillette, Wyoming. A couple of great big mines. And just an appreciation for the for the spaciousness here. I mean, there is nothing, nobody. So many points in this in this trip, uh, we we were thinking, where's all the overpopulation? You know, where's all the all this overcrowding? It certainly isn't here. I mean, we would go what felt like half a day and see nothing but nothing, which we loved. Which is big sky, open country, beautiful weather. It was a great day. This road seems to go on forever and ever. But the really cool part was, when you looked really closely off in the distance, you'd see those snow-capped mountains. Man, we were getting closer. I said you're so sweet that you gave me the shade. You can go first. 
always working for the next time. <laughs> That's on video. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Ladies, I said you could go first. Ladies first. And I heard what you said. All right. But I'm a gentleman. Dangling for, you know. <laughs> So leaving Sheridan, Wyoming, we're heading uh, heading on our way, we think, heading west. And uh, following, this time we're following uh, Apple Maps. Lori's thing said it was uh, faster. So maybe just a couple of miles out, we hit the first dead end. Pavement ends. I mean, it was a little neighborhood, and then, uh, and then there wasn't any more road left. So, oh boy, so we turn around head again just a couple miles back and now we're gonna now we're gonna do my mapper my google maps is right and uh we get probably 12 miles out in the middle of nowhere and it says turn right turn turn right up here and it's a, like this mountain pass road and it is dirt coming up so now we're like what what in the world? We we got two ways out. We have no other. We have no other options. The map's not showing us any other options, because we told it to avoid highways. So, without communicating it to us, Google Maps said, "Well, if you don't want the highway, you're going to get the dirt." So around we go again. Now, this was a real time uh, suck because we were again. It was probably 12, 13 miles uh, out just at this turnaround. Had to go back into town. So now we had. Uh, back to town for uh, the next adventure. As we're heading back in, we, we come to the realization that we're going to have to take a longer way around and uh, didn't really desperately need gas, but we thought, well, we might as well top them off. Now we've, we've gone this little extra way. We should probably just be safe. We know we're heading into the mountains and we don't want to be stuck uh, out in the middle of that. So now Lori takes over and has her uh, Apple Maps tell us where the next gas station is. And uh, it was funny because right here she's like, it's, the, it's at the sixth intersection, take a left. So we're just like stopping and going and stopping and going. And it's up here on the right. So and I, I'd have to look up what Sheridan is, but it's a, you know, you can see it's a big, it's a big town. Here's our first gas station. It's one of these remote control ones. I don't even know, there's no people, there's no building, no attendant. So, you know, my thinking here is to try to run the card 30 or 40 times and maybe it'll work on the 41st time. It was just stupid. So we finally uh, finally give up on that. Where's the next gas station? Lori's got her thing going. All right. It's up here. You know, take a left, take a right. So whizzing on down. It's a, it's a Cenex station. Looks good on the map. Ripping through, pushing a couple of red lights. You know, now we're getting, we're getting a little cranky. It's kind of hot. You know, it's in the 80s. We're dressed now. Fuel stop number two. Bags over the pumps. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're out of time. We don't have any time. We got to get, we got to get gas. We got to get going. We're not even close to being where we need to go. Take three on the fuel. Just, it just got frustrating. We finally found the fuel and, uh, and headed off on our way. We, we again resolved that we're going to hit uh, 90 and take the freeway. On the way from that gas station to 90, we probably passed 113 gas stations or so. Somewhere in there. There's gas everywhere, except for everywhere we went when we first got into Sheridan. Who knows, man. We figured it out. Now we're a little bit behind schedule. And uh, we still have the big decision to make. Do we take 14A or 14? We're a little frazzled now with this uh, mapping software letting us down. That's what we get for becoming dependent on these things. So we're gonna get on the on-ramp. We're gonna hop on to, to 90. Now, this is probably the, who even knows, the first time in 5,000 miles these bikes have even hit sixth gear. So I was wondering, you know, like knock the dust off of sixth gear as we get these things getting up into 60 or 70 miles an hour. Uh, but the, the funny thing is the speed limit out here 
is like, I mean, I mean, I think the uh, the actual speed limit's like 130 or something like that. One, well, you know, and people are, of course going faster than that. So we we winded up to 70. You know, that's all the faster we want to go. And so the cruise control it was like Ricky Bobby after his crash. Well, look at those things. Well, those are the other cars. That wasn't that wasn't so bad. But you can see the cars are passing us so fast that you can't even see them. They're going so fast uh, by us. 13 miles or something like that to, to uh, off the exit. Really not bad at all. So now, 21 minutes into it, we get to the really, really good stuff. This is entering the Bighorn National Forest. And uh, you know, what's really a shame is that I had to cut any of this out at all, but it, you know, I needed it to be manageable. This thing just keeps climbing, and the road quality is excellent. The uh, the weather conditions were excellent this day, but uh, what a road! Can't recommend this road highly enough. Now I've watched enough motorcycle riding videos to know that too much riding video all put together can get a little tedious uh, and a little boring, but. For the next 15 minutes, I really worked this panorama around the 360 to get multiple angles. This is just, in my opinion, just like must see footage. Just hopefully you can click it on full screen, just sit back and relax, turn up the sound and, uh, and enjoy the next 15 minutes or so of this unbelievable route.
Now this had been what felt like hours of just unbelievably beautiful mountain road riding up up to the snow as you can see up, up even above the what seemed like above the tree line and we started to crest the mountain and it was just overwhelmingly beautiful the the ground the horizon seemed to rise up you know past where it should it was just so beautiful that all i could think to do it was like gut it was like tightened up your gut and uh it was so grasping i don't know what the word is i just had to raise my hand to it just <laughs> just press my palm toward it and it was just it was like tears in your eyes beautiful and Lori and i uh had lost our cardo our batteries had gone out it was quite cold up there and the batteries don't last long when it's when it's uh cold so we were just experiencing this uh, kind of by, by ourselves without communicating and it was I don't know what the word is it's just spiritual in fact as soon as we as soon as we got to a place uh, at the bottom of the mountain where we could stop that's the first thing Lori said is that that was just spiritual or that was just God I think was her, were her words it was really absolutely moving now everyone's experience is different it, it's the it, it may have been the time of the day the angle of the sun it just it just illuminated uh, the, the the land I guess the horizon it was, as it was rising but I'm telling you it was spectacular just moving And what made it even crazier is it wasn't just a vision of beauty that was lasting a minute or two or some you know breathtaking vista this thing lasted for miles and miles and miles as we descended down the other side of this mountain it, it, it was a different angle you you'd take a you'd take a switch back you'd take a turn you'd come back it would be again it would just hit you with it just wow look at that another turn oh my god look at that it was it was like we've said uh, before in earlier videos it's kind of like a uh, the nearest i can compare it to the only thing i can compare it to is a fireworks show where you you know it's like some other thing shoots off it's like oh my god and oh my god another thing uh, but by the end you're just exhausted you're just filled with so much so much of it so much awe and, and just beauty it's it is arresting it just gets you quiet and uh you know it's it's a peak experience right i mean you're just you're there on the motorcycle the, you know i had this incredible like ambient music going and you're just floating down the mountain it was it was almost out of body man it was just you know run the gears keep your eyes on the on the edges of the road for, for, for critters, but it was just, it felt like you were just sort of floating as we floated down this mountain for, I don't know, 10, 12 miles, 20 miles. It just seemed like, it was, seemed like a, a forever treat. These things are often so fleeting, but this was like an all-you-can-eat buffet of beauty.
This ride was so spiritually powerful and meditative, I thought it would be fitting to end it with a reflection on motorcycling. I really hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the whole video, and thanks so much for watching. Riding a motorcycle is something special. It's not just about getting from point A to point B. It's about the experience. The wind on your face, the hum of the engine, the open road. It clears your head and makes everything else fall away. But there's more to it than that. Think about this. When you're riding, you're sitting in one place, right? Your hands are on the bars, feet are on the pegs of the boards. You're focused on the road, aware of everything around you. In a way, you're still. But you're moving. Kind of weird, right? Well, that's where the magic happens. You're in the moment, tuned in, fully alive. You're not thinking about what happened yesterday or stressing about tomorrow. You're just riding. That's why a lot of people say it's like therapy. It helps you let go of all the noise in your head. What you might not realize is this. That feeling you get from riding, that's a lot like meditation. No, I'm not talking about sitting cross-legged and humming to yourself. I mean something simpler. It's about focus. When you're riding, you can't be anywhere else but right there. You're breathing, you're watching the road, you're feeling everything around you. That's what meditation is, just being in the moment. And it helps. It helps chill you out, keep you sharp, and brings you back to what really matters. It helps separate the signal from all the noise. Plus, when you take the time to just breathe while you ride, say a few good words to yourself, or even just enjoy the scenery, you're doing something powerful. You're not just riding, you're taking care of your mind, your body, and your soul. We all ride to be free, to leave the stress behind. But what if you could use every ride as a chance to not just escape, but to grow? Every mile, every turn could be a moment to clear your mind, breathe, and reset. That's something all of us need, and it's something every rider can do. No fancy gear or new bike required. So the next time you hit the road, try this. Take a deep breath. Feel the air, the road, the bike. Don't rush, just ride. You might find that the peace you're looking for isn't out there. It's right here in the ride.